Giannis Antetokounmpo has been labeled as a Scotty Pippen by usually wrong ESPN analyst Richard Jefferson, but the Milwaukee Bucks won game four without Giannis and lost the first three games with him. So does Richard Jefferson have a point? Is Giannis a backup player to a star? Let's get into it. Welcome to Amateur Hour Sports, everybody. Today, talking about Giannis as a second option on a contending NBA team. And people have been labeling him as this second option, how he can't be the first option, because when he was the first option last season, they lost in six games to the Toronto Raptors. This season, when he missed out on most of game four, even after tearing it up in the early stages, Milwaukee managed to come back against the Miami Heat and take game four and extend it to five games where Giannis may or may not be available. But to address this label as a Scotty Pippen, I just immediately want to disregard how you compare those two players because Scotty Pippen is nowhere near what Giannis currently is. I mean, Giannis is going to be the better player when it's all said and done at the end of the career, but full respect to Scotty Pippen, right? He has six championships. He's got all those all-star appearances. He's in the Hall of Fame, though. His highest points per game is just over 20. Giannis is nearing 30 from this season. So they're not comparable players, but we know how good Scottie Pippen has been. Just don't want to compare those. But how about Giannis as a Batman or a Robin? That's what I like a little bit more. Do you want to talk about Giannis as the second option or can he actually be the first option on a contending roster? So for starters, there's absolutely no reason why Giannis can't be the Batman on an NBA contending team. I think that Mike Budenholzer is showing his deficiencies as a coach in this series because after winning two games against the Raptors last year, the Raptors won four in a row. They deployed a certain defensive scheme to combat Giannis and it worked and they couldn't figure it out. The other guys on the team other than Giannis did not step up in that series and thus the Raptors moved on and moved on to be NBA champions. But this season, the Miami Heat are deploying exactly the same techniques that Nick Nurse deployed in last year's Eastern Conference Final. And for some reason, Budenholzer can still not figure out how to win the games. Is it because the cast around Giannis isn't great? Well, I think part of it is. I don't think Chris Middleton is good enough to be the second player on a championship team because, well, even though he balled out in game four, he typically struggles in the playoffs. And that was very apparent against the Toronto Raptors in last season's Eastern Conference Finals. If Miami want to set up basically a blockade for Giannis from getting to the rim, Giannis needs other guys to step up in the games to help him out. He can't just do everything. And that's not exactly what he's getting. Chris Middleton balled out once Giannis exited the court, but he hasn't been consistent at all over the playoffs. Miami are perfectly content to let Chris Middleton try to beat them and make sure that Giannis doesn't. Every star on an NBA championship team needs that second tier star playing with them. You can't just be the best. Nobody else is good on your team. LeBron tried that in Cleveland for a very, very long time. And when Cleveland weren't giving him the supporting cast, he went to Miami where the second tier star was Dwayne Wade. And that's what allowed him to go and win his first NBA championship. Everybody, even in my opinion, the greatest player of all time, LeBron James, needs that second tier player to be on their team. Michael Jordan, widely considered the greatest of all time, needed his Scottie Pippen, an actual Scottie Pippen, that second tier star to help him push over the line. Everybody needs that. Giannis, I don't think, has that in Milwaukee. So how can you really criticize Giannis when the team isn't quite there? And even so, even without that secondary star, I know Chris Middleton's an all-star, but you put Chris Middleton in the West, he's not even sniffing that all-star team. He's not getting votes in the Western Conference. So Giannis, even without that star, still puts Milwaukee in huge, huge NBA championship contention. And if it wasn't for four wins in a row from the Raptors last year, they might have had a great opportunity to win the entire thing in the NBA Finals against a depleted Golden State Warriors. I think Milwaukee is kind of letting down Giannis in, you know, since it's a small market, they can't really attract 
those secondary stars to play with Giannis on his team. And I think Budenholzer, even though he was coach of the year last year, has still not figured out what to do when a team sets up a great defense against Giannis and allows the other players to take advantage. If those guys don't seize their opportunities, like a Chris Middleton, like Wesley Matthews, who was who was very poor in Game 4, like Eric Bledsoe, who is not the same player he was when he was at Phoenix, very obvious that is the case, what happens when those guys aren't stepping up? They're letting Giannis down, they're letting their team down, and Giannis, it just fuels the fire even more that he's going to leave at the end of his contract. A lot of people are talking about, like, like Miami is this, this big destination for Giannis. I've made the full video on why Giannis is going to be a Toronto Raptor at the end of next season if Milwaukee don't secure a championship this year or next season. Toronto is the much better fit than Miami in my opinion. I think there's going to be a better cast around him in Toronto. There's better coaching in Toronto and it will cater to Giannis' needs as a player. Can you imagine a duo Pascal Siakam and Giannis both entering their primes, that's a guaranteed championship having those two guys on your team. Masai Ujiri is lining up all of the Toronto contracts to expire for that offseason. Right now, the only players on contract after next season are Pascal Siakam for that max contract, obviously deserves that. Matt Thomas making, I think, less than $3 million, and Duan Hernandez also making less than $3 million. Masai Ujiri is lining up that summer to throw all the money at Giannis. He's preparing for this, and there's all the personal ties associated with Masai Ujiri and Giannis. So go check out that full video if you want more on that story. But Toronto is the better fit. I think he needs that secondary star like Pascal Siakam to really push him onwards into that NBA championship. The biggest thing Giannis is going to care about at the end of his contract, if he doesn't win a championship, is his legacy. He's always cared, it seems like, a lot about his legacy at his player. And winning an MVP, and likely an MVP this year, and perhaps, maybe, I don't think he should get it, but he could win a Defensive Player of the Year this year. What he will lack is that NBA championship, and he's willing to go chase that NBA championship at the end of his contract to save his legacy. Imagine he stays with Milwaukee for his whole career without winning a championship. This is the period after this contract where Giannis needs to win that championship. He's like going to sign a four or five year deal. That is going to be the entirety of his prime. His athleticism is going to start to fade off and, he, and it won't allow him to be in that prime Giannis level after that contract expires. So he knows if he wants to be a first option on a championship team, it needs to happen in that next contract, which is why I think Toronto is the best place for him to go win that championship. He could possibly, maybe probably win a championship in Miami, but I think Toronto is the better fit for him. Absolutely, a two-time MVP, it seems like he's going to be, is definitely, absolutely, a first option on a championship contender team. He is capable of doing that. Imagine him being the second best player on your team. This guy is about to win his second MVP. How on earth can he be the second option if he's the most valuable player in the league? You get this guy a nice cast around him, better players than Milwaukee have been able to do. Because even with the players he has, there's still a one seed in the East. So imagine with a proper supporting cast, guys playing up to the level they should be reaching in the playoffs, not Chris Middleton once every four games. Giannis is definitely capable of being that number one guy, the Batman on a team. He is not the Scottie Pippen, he is the Michael Jordan. Not quite at the levels, obviously, but he can be that first option. Again, just going back to that Scottie Pippen comparison, Scottie Pippen, the accolades obviously are great, but they are not what Giannis has done. Giannis is going to be a guy whose legacy is remembered for his individual accolades, not his ability to play on a team. If he can add that NBA championship, even better. But Giannis is going to be remembered for those individual rewards, like the MVPs, like the Defensive Player of the Years, like the amount of All-Star appearances he's going to have, being an All-Star captain, if he can win an All-Star MVP like Scottie Pippen did. Scottie Pippen is remembered for his role on the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan. Giannis is remembered for himself, his individualism. So for that reason, 
there's definitely no comparison there. Giannis is a top dog, and I think at some point, he's going to make the right decision. I think he is going to make the right decision in free agency and pick a team that is going to allow him to push onward to the next level of team basketball and win an NBA championship. I think the best place for that is Toronto. Maybe other people think differently there. So two questions to leave off with. Can Giannis be the first option on a championship team? Can that team be Milwaukee and also... Where do you think Giannis goes at the end of his contract? Please let me know in the comments down below. I think Giannis, yes, can be that first option, and I think he should do it on Toronto. I don't think Milwaukee are ever going to be able, because of their market, to get him the support they need. But thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you like, and subscribe to Amateur Sports for more content just like this as well. Hit the notification bell. We post four times a week. Usually, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday this week. A lot of differences kind of going with the Raptors schedule so I can do a post-game reaction video. I'm going to be doing Sunday, already done, today, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Then we'll see how it rolls from there. But thank you to everybody who is a new subscriber or an old subscriber who has continuously rocked with the channel. I truly appreciate everybody who has hit that subscribe button. But thank you again. At the end of the day, I believe what I say. If you disagree, that is okay. We'll see you again next time.